Hi, my name is Shoto, and I am a monk at Sokokoji, where I am committed to training my mind under the guidance of my teacher, Sokozan. We rely on your support for much of what we offer here. This includes building projects to create space for full-time and part-time practice residents. Thank you for your help. So don't ignore the silence so between thoughts, uh, between people's words when you're listening to someone. Don't ignore the silence by grasping onto what, what even creates the, the idea of a space or a silence. There's noise or there's talk, there's conversation. It's also happening in your head. When I say your head, I don't know if it happens in the head or not, it could be in your left shoulder. But something is coming up as language in our mind about everything. It might not come to complete com, to completion as a sentence or words, but the quality of thought is very interesting and it has different kinds of dimensions and depths to it. Get used to that. Get get to know yourself. Get to know that mind stream. How do you do that? You look at it. If your mind stream is chattering in this way or chattering in that way, don't interrupt that with your interpretation of it because Chances are, and I mean it, chances are that m manipulation or meddling is coming out of the self-centeredness, the narcissism, or the belief that there is a separate self. This is untrue. Don't believe me. You don't have to believe me, but consider it. Consider it how solid, how real your idea of who you are is, and see, what, see how it leans on things, leads on ideas, concepts, and it fills up the space with uh, a kind of uh, self-centered greed this isn't going to show up as you being greedy. You don't want anybody to think you're greedy. So you will make sure that doesn't show up too much, but you're after what you what you think. You have greediness about knowing. That, that fills up the space of what, what I call wisdom. But if, you, if you want to understand that, you have to look at the spaces between anything. Thoughts, two people walking down a hallway, be aware of the space. When you're talking to someone, be aware of how, what they're doing with the space. Don't leave what is happening for what it's about. I'm not trying to turn you into a psychologist or a figure outer. Don't do that. Just watch the space itself. The space itself is wisdom. But you have to see that because it's not other than the objects that are showing up as a separation between the, between the so that actually allows you to look at something as space. First, you have to look at the things themselves, the thoughts, the emotions, the feelings with no comment. No comment. That's very difficult to do. That is the path as far as I see it. Other people teach this differently. I'm teaching out of what I'm looking at. I don't remember anything I was taught and I studied for a long time. I still don't. But I know what I'm looking at right now, every moment. If you're interested, I can help you. You, you can actually look at what this is and not be fooled by your mind or by anybody's stupid propaganda trying to get a hold, trying to get a hold of you or put you in prison or control you has to be seen it is awareness it's consciousness only i'll say this has been said way before i got here but there isn't anything but consciousness this is all illusory it's, it's pretty solid but it's it's not real it's not real if you find this in a dream it makes the same noise in a dream This is a dream. Don't believe me. Look for yourself and see what it is. It's an astonishing realization. At the same time, the, the piece of granite you're hitting that the ego will try to use to prove that there's the relative truth is real, and this is pretty substantial. Uh, you will see that. You will see that that the very sound, the very feeling of that, is an illusion. Look at the space. When when you're thinking about anything, about how to who's going who you're going to call to fix the the rain gutters because they're broken. Look at the space between the, the the thoughts of the words. Look at the spaciousness in your discursive thought that's saying, "Should I do? Should I do that? Should I call? Should I, just look at the spaciousness in there. Enjoy that while while you're a living being." Because eventually consciousness goes up back into the cosmic soup. Uh, there may be some kind of identity, there may not. But, but if there's an identity there, it's going to be in big trouble because it operates out of 
right and wrong, up and down, back and forth, existence and non-existence. And it will opt for existence, even if it's a, as a ghost. Don't believe me. Don't believe me. But you might want to not ignore what I just said. Listen to what I said. Don't forget it. If you can help it. When you return to the cushion, remember that nothing is real. Nothing is real. There's, there isn't anything that's substantial, even if it's a piece of granite or incense smoke that's wafting its way across the room. It's there, unreal, insubstantial. So the space between people, the space between words you're, you're, that someone is saying to you, there's, there's more understanding in the space between someone's words than there is in the actual words, the communication there itself. When you and I were at my uh, endocrinologist today, and just, uh, she's very intelligent, she's an endocrinologist, or she's a physician's assistant, or nurse practitioner. Huh? A nurse, nurse practitioner. practitioner. So she's a real smarty pants. And uh, we're there listening to her interpret what's happening with me. But I have no idea what we talked about or what she talked about, but I remember the dynamic that was in the room and it was, uh, it was consciousness, regardless of somebody having their credential or sitting in that chair and looking at charts, and it's consciousness only. And that is what is happening now. It's, it's not an occurrence because it doesn't have a past and a future. So we look for an occurrence and we buy into that siren that just went by. That's something. And my hand moving is something. There isn't anything. This, this is a, an illusion. The uh, identity is an illusion. You can go on lifetime after lifetime trying to figure everything out, try to buy something, try to sell something, try to manipulate yourself into some kind of a castle. And it turns out to be a cave of demons. When I say demons, I'm just talking about the way uh, the three poisons tend to show, tends to show up. Space. That's basically what you're doing in this kind of training when you return to the wall and sit there and watch thoughts, emotions, memories, presumptions, conclusions come and go. Just observe. A consciousness is so amazing, consciousness only, that it will it will buy into anything, it will sell anything, and it will become some kind of a manipulator in order to protect what? An imaginary self that is unreal. There's no one here. There's no one here. Actually, there's no one anywhere. There is no separation. Looks like it though. It's an incredible illusion that we are deluded by. And everyone's karma or everyone's causes and conditions, how you're treated, what you're, what happened in your past life that is showing up in this life, even though it, we're not talking about believing in past life, don't believe in anything. Consider everything, but you don't have to operate out of some kind of belief in this and disbelief in that. Don't do that. But if you can't help doing that, then you're going to be pretty aware that you're doing that. Then just watch that grasping at something, rejecting something. Watch the three poisons in your own mind stream. You can do it. Don't accept it. Don't reject it. Don't look away. I say this. I've been saying this same thing for years and years. Sometimes people even say, um, keep saying the same thing over and over, like giving the same talk over and over. I say, yeah. Can you tell me what I've been saying? Can you actually repeat to me what I've been saying? Some people can pretty well. Some people can say it better than I may have said it initially. But it is about awareness. It is about consciousness. There isn't anything but consciousness. And consciousness is not a thing. 
everything arises in consciousness. These body mind com uh, complexes arise in consciousness and go back down, but consciousness doesn't go anywhere. And you have the opportunity in this lifetime on this path to actually see through the delusion of a separate self so that when you die, physically die, you won't die when you die because you, you're consciousness only. So the personhood comes apart, the body comes apart, all of your predilections for doing this, doing that, liking this, not doing that, and your stupid ideas, and I mean stupid by way of being ignorant, not, it's not, a, not, not condemning anyone. I couldn't talk like this if I hadn't spent half a century looking at it without coming to a conclusion. Eventually the conclusion came to me and it wasn't a conclusion. It was, it was just fundamental openness without a self. Fundamental. As it has been said, a dream within a dream, within a dream, within a dream. I would just keep on going. The dream is the dream. There's more dreams and, and more dreams. But if you, if you want something, second noble truth. I'm not teaching something other than what the Buddha taught. Desire is the cause of the first noble truth, which is suffering. So if you want anything, you're going to spend, you will stay in this illusion of samsara where it looks like things are real. There are real beings who are doing real things. But if you see what this is, then you, without anything happening at all, you just, there's just no more clinging to anything, no demand for anything. You don't care what happens, but you also don't ignore what happens. That's different. That's ego wanting to be somebody who doesn't care. It actually, it's, it's better than that. And it's worse than that. It's better than that because you actually see the mystery. You see it. You don't see it with eyes. You see it with this. And what is this? I have no idea. I don't need to know what this is. That's some kind of relative knowledge. It's not, I'm not talking about the blood pumping organ. I'm saying this, this. Closest you can get to it in the body is right in the center. According to Ramana Maharshi, it's two fingers to the right of the center. I think he's off by a finger. Then get a single, oh, I got one smile. Two smiles, three smiles. I don't know where it's at. Seems like it's here though. Ramana is probably a better source than I would be. So it's better than that. It's worse than that. So it's better than that because you're liberated. There's no one in prison anymore by anything. Even your thoughts can't imprison you. They can't find it. The thoughts keep coming and going, and some of them are ragged around the edges. Some of them are damn right irritating, downright irritating. Just irritating thoughts coming and going, looking for somebody that feels that way. Or well, the feeling feels that way. But it, if it doesn't have a self, then it, it has no energy. It just starts to collapse. I can keep going or we can do some interaction with questions. But before we do that, I want to thank everybody for helping us. There's 37 windows open here. I want to, I want to help or thank everybody for helping us keep this monastery going, keep the whole thing, Soko Goji Buddhist community, Soko Goji Buddhist monastery, and other things that we're doing that are outside of the of the dimension here of a, a closed uh, idea of a monastery also extending out to our neighborhood and to the high school that's three blocks away, trying to do that in as many ways through the yoga studio, through counseling services that are coming out of this um, Buddhist community that are, are not necessarily have a, any idea of turning one into a Buddhist particularly, about helping people fundamentally fundamentally and that means right where they're at and that's not easy and then ask you then also to continue helping us if you can so questions yes school string or thomas from uk says please explain how division always seems to linger hmm. well 
how it seems to linger, it lingers because of attachment to it. So it's, it's about the attachment to it. And the attachment to it comes out of the lingering around there, think, thinking of something you need to understand or figure out. And you don't. So if thoughts arise, no figuring, no calculation, no nothing. If it needs to do anything, situationally, or I should say using the fancy word pratitya samutpada, dependent origination, if it needs to do something, you won't be able to stop it. If it doesn't need to do something, when I say it, I'm saying reality in terms of the of the uh, incredible display uh, of phenomena that are everywhere that show up as stars and plants and stones, animals, human beings, all inter intermixing in terms of different forms of society. Something needs to occur, you won't be able to stop it. If it doesn't need to occur, you won't be able to generate it. So just watch that spool string, observe it, be an observer of everything. And if you're observed, then if you're really observing what is happening without judging, doing, doing anything with it other than just observing, then it's probably going to be a little frightening to the ego or to the self-centered part of the mind. And that's what we're working with. You are not a separate being. And again, it's, I'm not here to preach or lecture to you that you need to believe that, but you can consider it and then take it to the wall. Spend time sitting at the wall, look at the wall and with all the senses open and receive whatever happens. You don't have to train anything in the, by way of trying to be a meditator. From my perspective, which I, and I taught that kind of meditation and studied it myself, I think that if you're listening to me, you're ready to do this in a more open uh, ungrounded, untethered way, which is shikantaza. It's been around for a long time. It may, you may liberate yourself, you may not. This is a follow-up question. I feel the more I carry on this path, the more I carry on this path, I feel so much less solid. It can be demotivating almost. Is this the right idea? The way you're saying, uh, is this a spool string again? Yes. Yeah. Just do it anyway. Be stubborn about it. If you need to do that. Be stubborn. Just return to it. Don't question it. You probably have already questioned it quite a bit, the way you ask questions over the last year or so or more. I say you probably have enough intellect going on there to dismantle a lot of things. Stop it. Don't do that anymore. Be be alone, be untethered. Just receive whatever shows up. If it's a flower, if it's a rock, if it's a sidewalk that's going moving under your feet as you walk, the illusion that you're in motion. Just receive that. You're you're missing your life if you're trying to figure anything out. I'm not saying stop thinking, but allow the thinking process to actually come up when it's necessary, situationally. If you think you're not thinking, then that's thinking. You, you, there's no way you can know that you're not thinking. If you know that you're not thinking, then that's thinking about not thinking, which is not the same thing. Although I think Dogen talked about it that way. But look what he was talking. He was talking to a, a bunch of kids in Japan in the 13th century. Further questions? Yeah. Yeah, How? How can we receive a teaching without endeavoring to figure it out? How can we receive a teaching without endeavoring to figure it out? Practice, continue, return. It's like, how can I learn to shoot baskets with, without trying to calculate something? You know, you just keep throwing the ball if it's basketball. I don't play basketball, but um, I've shot a lot of baskets and I always miss. When I throw something at a wastebasket, it hits the edge of the basket. So I hit, I know where the basket is. hits the edge, it falls out. How about you? Yeah. So just continue, continue. Don't look for results. Just do it anyway. I mean, aim, but then watch how you're missing it all the time. That's, that will be the message to the ego, the self-centered part of the mind. You can't do this. We need to, we need to, like the Trung Parampaje once said, you need to wear this ego out, like walking on a shoe until it wears out. Just continue, continue. 
return to the wall, no matter how frustrating, no matter how disappointing, get your butt in there and get over to the wall. You've received uh, lay precepts. Use those precepts, repeat them. Prostrate to the teacher, prostrate to the, to the altar, prostrate to the Sangha, prostrate to the teachings, prostrate, prostrate. More? Is that, is that like aiming? Is that what yes. you're talking about? It's using some kind of a structure. And what do we have coming down to us from thousands of years ago? The three jewels, the Buddha, the teacher, simply put, one who teaches, and what he, she, they is, are teaching, and then the community that is endeavoring to understand what that is and train their minds, simply put. There's no, you don't have to believe in anything. You don't have to believe in Buddha. There's nothing particularly to, to worship in the conventional sense of worshiping. When you prostrate to the altar or to the, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, you're prostrating to your own enlightened nature. Because if it's anything other than that, then it becomes a theism or there's some kind of somebody else that you're, you're uh, worshiping. This doesn't mean you don't need a teacher. But eventually you see that the teachers and you are not two separate beings or things or consciousnesses. It takes time. More? Do I have to know what I'm aiming for? Have an intellectual idea about it? What are your what what, what were the vows you received? Do you remember those? Or is there one of them that stands out to you? There's 16 of them. It's one of them. Don't do harm. Well, that's the, that's the, what is that, the second one of the three pure precepts? Do good, don't do harm. And what's the other one? Be with all things. Read those, go back and read those. And then you could say indoctrinate yourself a little bit. So you're, you're being indoctrinated by every damn thing around other people, ideas, television, what Ruby says, what I say, what everyone in here is saying. Find some way to, to go in and Butt your head against that. It, it, it's a Dharma gate. Yeah. Recite the 16 precepts. And remember that third one. That's, that's the vow to be with all things. That's the Bodhisattva vow that is kind of hidden in the 16 precepts. Put others first. That's impossible to do. You can. But if you intend to do, the ego starts to show up more clearly. You start to see, well, why can't we do that? Why couldn't we just put everybody first? And that's when you get to see the ego starts to stand out in relief and, and might just stand out in relief for quite, quite a long time before it just blows up because it's not getting fed. The ego will continue as long as you're feeding your own position. You're reinforcing everything with your, with your own stupid propaganda about who you are and what you should get and what enlightenment is like. I'll do it. It's worse than that. As uh, U.G. Krishnamurti, when he had a spontaneous awakening, called it a calamity. It's like it because it's like that. It's just like complete disappointment. There isn't anyone. You aren't any particular person. But it seems like that. It was, seems seems very real, doesn't it? Yeah, seems real. More? I'd like you and bowing. I'd like to ask again: Do I have to know what I'm aiming for? Well, there, there needs to be some kind of intuition or inspiration. You wouldn't be living in a monastery and receiving jukai if you didn't have some kind of intuition around that. Some of that comes from the teacher. Some of it comes from aspects of the teaching. Some of it comes from uh, the community. And it comes from all three of those, the, the teacher, the teaching, and the community. So what are you aiming for? So my way of saying it is all along when I was practicing early on was, I want to see the truth myself, not just what's said in a book. I want to see it myself. It feels kind of egocentric but 
the ego wants to be on board for a, as long as it can, but it's a, it is a fast moving train. It's, it's, it's so fast moving that there's no motion at all. And the ego cannot live on that and that it has to have relative support to continue to be a person going somewhere. You follow me? Okay. Further questions? Mahesh going. Go ahead, Mahesh. Other than sitting, uh, what are the uh, top or most important things that a student uh, should be doing? Going. Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. So teacher, the teaching, which you already study, the community, and you're, you're showing up on here and you're interacting with this community. And you have, uh, you have another community there, and it was in Bloomington. You're connected with that uh, community in Bloomington. Do they, do they get together and study at all? Uh, it's in Mahishbhavan. It's in Arkansas. It's, it's where? Arkansas. Arkansas? Yeah. Arkansas, okay. Well, you have that too. So there's the, the teacher, the teaching, and the community. You have a, you have a teacher. I, I know I've heard that. So you have that. Plus you attend here. I'm happy with you to... For you to attend and study with us so so i just say it's a matter of keep going keep going and the other thing i would say as a any of you who are practitioners for more than a few years at some point consider going into retreat you wouldn't have to do it here but just somewhere and uh, i would help you with that if anybody if they wanted to do that uh, a retreat is 10 days uh, or more uh, uh, seven days is called a week. It's not a retreat. Uh, three days is called uh, three days of meditation. It's not a retreat. So it needs to be longer than that. I'm not sure why, but that seems to be the case. It needs to be longer than seven days. Further questions? We still have some time if there are questions. Yes. When you find, you say there isn't anything. I do. What is it you see when you don't see anything? You don't see anything. What do you see? Well, if you do see anything, you see that it's unreal, that it's a, it's just a, an elaborate display of everything powerful it's very very seductive to take us into this or we're afraid of that but if you're if you see what this is then you're not afraid of anything but that doesn't mean that uh, bad weather doesn't continue to arise it may more in your valley is not seeing anything emptiness Um, somewhat so the, the path is ground is suffering, as I've said many times and was said way before I got here. The reason we're doing this is we're not doing too well. We're having some difficulty somehow, and we want to understand, and we've stumbled into the teachings of the, of the Buddha, possibly through just reading something like the Dhammapada or something, or Thich Nhat Hanh or Dalai Lama, or uh, coming this direction. Uh, and somehow some kind of inspiration shows up and we we want to know more. We want to find out what this is, what it is for ourselves. And so that's, uh, that's when it becomes the path. We have the ground of suffering and then the path of awareness and then the, the, the fruition, which can show up different ways. Uh, the fr- actual fruition, is nothing happens because it's all out of steam. There's no, it's seen to be an illusion it's unreal. It's like uh, you're living in a dream. So it's all made up. It's all invented. Every single, every piece of granite is invented, made up. Go ahead. When you're bowing. So when you don't see anything, is there any thinking occurring? Not much. But I see, I see things, but they're, it's like everything goes away. First, everything becomes empty and just 
it's just empty. You can't find a reference point and it can be very frustrating, even scary for the ego, for the self-centered aspect of the mind. Yogacara tradition calls it the seventh consciousness. Among the eight consciousnesses, the seventh is the paranoid part. So that paranoid part, we just go into it anyway and it starts to wear out. How that's going to show up for each person can be quite a bit different. But eventually it becomes empty of what you thought it was. Everything starts to empty out and have a different kind of significance rather than the significance of otherness. So it becomes empty of other, the actual otherness of everything becomes empty. And you realize you're creating all of this. This is your dream. Yes. Who is it that creates? Consciousness. So yeah. when, when we think we see other, that's also consciousness yeah, creating but, other? Yes, but it's unreal. It's insubstantial. It has no, there's no ballast there. It won't, it won't last. It's, it's, it won't be long and it just uh, goes, goes away. It goes back into the ether or however you want to characterize it. Or it all, you could also, also say it's never appeared. If you have the questions, please don't hesitate. Please don't hesitate. I don't know what I know, but you know what you want to know. And that's why I say, what do you want to know? It's not that I have all the answers. I don't have any answers. I can barely teach a class. I have to dream up stuff to talk about. So I ask questions. Yes, sir. When you see that it's a dream, does it still have a quality? Does it become fun? Can it still be difficult? It's, it, can it become fun? Yeah. It's fun and difficult at the same time. It's incredibly um, magnetizing because it's unreal. It's like watching a movie. So it can, but that doesn't mean it doesn't, the bad weather isn't there, the difficulty, but you see that that's unreal. You actually witness negative feelings and see that they're unreal. And what sees that they're unreal? Consciousness. Uh, it could be some ego involved in that to some extent. If there's, coming to conclusions about how enlightened you are. Mm -hmm. Is there still agency in the dream? What do you mean by agency? Freedom, like some ability to... Smarty pants. Freedom Mountain, isn't that your name? You're a big pile of rocks that is completely liberated. Realize it. Now I'll ask your question. Is there agency in the dream? Sure. But the agency doesn't have any agent. It's without an agent. So therefore, it's the, it's the, uh, the path of awakening. Unless it's trapped in the dream, and then it goes into in and out of the realms, into the hell realm, back into the jealous God realm, back into the God realm, back down to the human realm. Then 20 years later, 20 minutes, or 15 lifetimes later, it comes back through the hungry ghost realm. It's just, it's just a way of talking about it. There are no realms. There's just these incredible states of mind that seem to have uh, some kind of appearance in consciousness because of the disturbance. And what is the disturbance? Thinking there's something else. But, but there's just, there's, it, Trunk Rinpoche once described it as at first, there's just an open dimension where nothing is happening at all. And then some kind of whether it's chemistry or whatever it is, something gets slightly out of whack uh, in the openness and or, or out of balance would be the conventional way of saying it maybe. And then you have hot and cold. And then the hot and cold, of course, anytime you have two different things, uh, then you're gonna have energy. So it's like, have you ever held a battery in your hand? How many? Two pen light batteries? They, but they don't do anything unless you hook them to a light bulb. They're just that. They're, 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 there's nothing happening there. That's possible to realize that right now. Realize it. Just realize it. Don't stop looking. Don't stop looking at it. And don't come to a conclusion about it. Realization doesn't have a, 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 an outcome in the conventional sense of hot and cold turning into a tornado. Can we see that it's a dream and still be attached to what's arising? Yes, you can. Don't have to get rid of attachment, just have to look at it. 
If you try to become unattached, then you end up going in circles trying to accomplish something, trying to be a better meditator, be a good Buddhist, or get somewhere. More, that's good, don't stop. You really don't have any more? How about those questions you're going to ask me in the interviews coming up? He's asking you're going to look. You got time, go ahead. Is all strategizing extra? Yes. Don't strategize any. But if you're in a situation where some kind of a, not strategy, but some kind of way of doing something just shows up spontaneously, you could, you could look at that, consider that. But just shows sp spontaneously, not impulsively. Impulsive, impulse is based on fear of not getting it right or hope that you can be ahead of everybody else and figure it out and show up really successful. But spontaneity just means that you're, it's, you're, you're part, you're not a, if you're not a singular person, good, going along, you won't know it. Because it takes an ego to clamp down on me going somewhere. So if you actually realize what this is, then there's, there isn't anything but spontaneity. Not, it's not a bragging point for me. I'm this wonderful, spontaneous dude who just blabbers away and seems to be entertaining or interesting. But it's actual spontaneity. There's no personhood here. And anybody who is uh, who sees what this is could say the same thing. They're unlikely to say it because they don't need to say it. They don't need a pat on the back. Although I would like to show up in Wikipedia soon. Can you handle that? Fingers crossed. Good. One of the things that I like to say to people, there aren't many people that can connect with this way of teaching, but there's a few. And so I would like to get in front of as many people as I can. And that, uh, what do you call that? The 2%, 1%. I would like to, to show up in that way to fundamentally help people not go in circles for lifetime after lifetime. You can do this. You can you can see this. Go ahead. Well, Divine, can can you uh, observe your grasping? Yes. Or observe the identity that is uh, believing in what is showing up. You can. You can see it, but you don't have to get rid of it. If you start to get rid of it, then you're creating you're creating kind of a <clears throat> of an identity, just not like a higher form of dream. It's a it's a more profound knowledgeable, wise dreamer. It just builds up a, and the next thing you know, and you're, you're in one of the, the God realms that is talked about all over in Buddhism. Various level, levels of getting better, getting, stay right here, awaken right here in this dirt pile called earth, awaken here, because this is not far away from hell where people are suffering. It's not far away from the, any of the six realms, including the human realm. This is the human realm. But our mind can go into hell, and our mind can go into heaven, and our mind can go become jealous. Our mind can become a starving, where we have to fill ourselves full of something, we have to get something, greed, lust, those things. More. When the mind, when we're observing, uh, are we... I guess my question is, are we making progress if we're able to observe? Are we loosening the grip of ego, ego, even while we're involved in ego? Following? Yes, but but it might not show up as any kind of pro, any kind of progress. Maybe a little bit. The the progress is that you just return to it. You. You know that you're not going to stop doing this. You have a dedication to it that is going to last the rest of your life, whether your teacher is around or whether you lose your sangha or everything collapses, which this whole sangha could just collapse. And it might keep going. I don't know. I would like it to keep going. But fundamentally, I'm not concerned about outcomes. I'm concerned about the path. And this is the path. You are, if you're here, especially if you're wearing robes, you're on the path of the Buddha's Dharma even though the Buddha died 2,500 years ago. Because what the Buddha taught is right here. And I have no proof. I don't need any proof for it. I, I'm looking at it. Ondabang, you called this talk, Don't Ignore the Silence. Yes. What is um, the relationship between, between space and silence? Same. 
I mean, you could you could characterize it different ways, but the way you're asking me, it's just the same thing. It's just silence. You're only going to notice silence if you're looking between things. You're only going to notice space if you're looking between things, between words, between people. It's a, the space is an illusion, but it, it continues to manifest as a reality until you realize what it is. Levine, uh, yes. Full String has another question. What is intuition and how does it remain? I don't know. Intuition is a word for, I, I don't know, I, I don't use that word much, but it's just awareness. Levine, I wonder if you meant intention. What is intention and how does it remain? Intention? Uh, repetition. You can't maintain intention, so you come back to, you return to the the three jewels, the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, over and over and over, and you use your body, you prostrate to that. Or don't, if you think oh, that's too holy, or you know, you might be selling your soul to the devil, then don't do it. It's something else. If you have doubts about this, don't do it. But if you're wearing a robe, that means there was a time when you didn't have doubts about it. Because if you're wearing a robe or wearing a rock suit, I've tried to talk you out of it. Maybe I didn't pound on you or something, but I said, I'm sure I've said to most people, you don't have to do this if you don't, don't want to, don't do this if you don't have to. If you have to do it, then I'll help you. But it's not good to step on the path in a, in a way like receiving robes and receiving vows and then go the other way. Or I've had people do that. Not that they haven't found maybe a better teacher for them. So it's, that's possible too. Sharon Bowie? Yes, Sharon. Oh, you had mentioned suffering, being in the human realm. I'm thinking about current events with mass shootings. Is there space between, I look at it, try not to go to war and not go to peace with that. Is, this space, is that the space in between when we don't go to war and we don't go to peace? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you won't have intense feelings about it of sadness or or feeling helpless that because it's such a big avalanche and it's a slow moving avalanche so it gives the illusion that we can step in there with a with a protest sign so should we do that if, if the intention is there by all means go do it but if you're trying to change things with your sign uh, then you know, it may be uh, more difficult so yes, if, you, if you're wired in that way, then you can protest. But as far as accomplishment or accomplishment or failure to accomplish, that's where we get caught up in that. They were not doing it right. The intention is everything. Be with all things, save all beings, put others before yourself. There's so many ways to say it. Read the path of the Bodhisattva by Santi Deva or the seven points of mind training by uh, Atisha or read uh, Chogyam Trungpa, read Dalai Lama, read, there's all kinds of, we are all the sutras that we study here. There's just so many ways of studying this. More, Sharon? No, thank you. Certainly. Is there anybody else on? Uh, Naveen Bowen. Go ahead, Isaac. Go ahead, Isaac, and then I'll, I'll get to uh, Jishin. Go ahead, Isaac. When you say, um... What you're looking for, you're looking at. What are you, what are you pointing to, Bowen? I'm saying that the very thing you're looking at, whatever it is, whether it's somebody sitting in front of you, or whether it's the wall, or whether it's uh, your thought patterns, or whatever you're looking at, is you, what you're looking for is right there. It's just that it's probably a cover up until you see what it is. So look at the cover ups. My hand in front of my other hand. You have to look at it until the cover up falls away and you see what you're looking for, which is liberation or happiness or however you want to characterize it. There's lots of ways. It's like his holy or uh, not, uh, his uh, his uh, his eminence, Tai Situ Rinpoche, once said in Chicago, I was there. He says, no one wants to be suffered. <laughs> I've always forgot. I've always remembered that. No one wanted to be suffered. Of course, his English was a little 
rough around the edges, but still in the middle of that difficulty using English, you could feel what he was talking about with Tai Chi Tu. So it's about looking, whatever's in front of you, the wall, whatever shows up, your, your um, dissatisfaction with something that you're doing or something someone's saying, just look at that. Don't, don't leave it for what it means. Don't leave someone's body language for what their body language means. Just receive the body language. Just look at it and with a willingness to not know what the hell it means. You don't know what, you don't need to know what something means relatively. If you do, it'll show up in such a way that you you are drawn into it and you have to stop someone from abusing someone else. You don't have to think about it. It's obvious what to do. But if you're thinking, if you're all wound up in right and wrong and should be and shouldn't be, you'll, you'll miss the train. You'll miss your life. You'll, you'll actually miss what is showing up as your personal karma that, uh, that you need to look at and opt for something that is better or might work better, some kind of strategizing around it. Bowing, I, I still don't think I understand. Um, like I'm just thinking of like, I guess right now I'm looking for a certain type of suffering to go away. So yeah. how, how am what I kind of suffering? Can, is it something, is it too personal that you can't tell me about it on uh, here with the whole community? Or is it something you could say a little bit more about it? Looking for a certain type of suffering that you would like to go away? Um, you could call it anxiety. Yeah. So anxiety is a good word. And what do I say about it? Look at the anxiety. Do it in the sitting practice of meditation, shikantaza. Uh, t- take the word and write it on a piece of paper and study that word and see what that word is covering up. Because it is probably a cover up for something. I don't know what that is, but you do. You need to see it. So just don't give up. Keep going in that direction. You'll see it. I can't guarantee it. But if I were, uh, if I were a gambling man, and I'm not, but I, I'll bet you're going to see this in this lifetime. <laughs> but don't give up. You're not, you're, you're, just don't give up. Keep going. You're a young guy. What are you, 23? Yeah, that's young. Right, guys? <laughs> how many, 23 years? No, 20, no. May I ask how old you are? 28. 28? Yeah. Got an old man back here, 28 years old. <laughs> so, Jishin, go ahead. Jishin Bowing. Why you are not concerned about the outcome? Bowing. Well, if you're concerned about the outcome, then you're operating in terms of relative truth. You're, you're trapped in the relativity of things that fundamentally, as these teachings say, I'm not teaching something that isn't, that isn't, that can't be a, you could say backed up by the traditional teachings of the Buddha or Longchampa or Dongen Zenji or Trungpa Rinpoche or Kobenchino Roshi. You can go on and on, Dalai Lama. This is unreal. It is vividly unreal and emptiness, yet there's still form. So it's, that's the duality that we have to, you could say, to use a fancy word, transcend. Don't buy this, don't buy that, don't buy, don't sell, don't do anything. See it yourself. See it through your own uh, consciousness. You Go ahead. And, and being concerned about the path, as you said, means um, maybe you can finish it. What does it mean, bowing? Maybe I can finish it. All right, then I'm putting, Jishin just put me in charge of her thought patterns. Okay. Give me a minute. You don't need to know that. 
Did she ask a question? What was it? What was her question? Do you remember? Does anybody remember Jishin's question other than Jishin? Jishin, do you remember your question? What was it? Why you are concerned about the past? Bowing. Why I am concerned about the past? Past. Past. About the past? Why I'm concerned about it? Yes. I like it. It's a good path. As it said in the teachings, good in the beginning, good in the middle, good at the end. It's always good. So anyone here is on the path in some way or another. Some people are appear to be totally dedicated because they're living in a monastery and they're monks, but they still go in circles. They still go in circles too, don't you guys? In circles now. She show you have a question? You should have. <laughs> Navid Bowing. Yes, Navid, go ahead. You're gonna do uh -huh. it in the place of Chisho. Go ahead. When you finally saw the truth yourself, um, was that something? I didn't, that something? I didn't say that. I didn't say I, I, didn't, I don't claim anything. I didn't see the truth. Continue your question. Don't stop. Keep going. Uh, I was just going to say that. Was that something new to what? you? No. Was Nothing happened. What, it might be better said that things stopped happening. Things, the projection on everything stops happening. I mean, even if the projection comes up, you don't give it any, uh, it has no wheelbase to it. It has no credibility to be here in, in any ultimate sense or even relative sense. It's just not here. And so therefore you can have a sense of humor about it, even about your own passing. You're not concerned with what's gonna happen next because you have unhooked yourself from what happens next by your intention to see the truth now, right now, this very moment. There, there isn't, a, there's not three moments, the past, the present, and the future. There's just this moment. If you think there's more than that, then this is the very nature of confusion and delusion. And uh, if you see it, illusion, it won't go away because you still have a human form that got you here because you believe in stuff believe in stuff so you're here we're all here we're in this so-called human realm you've stumbled into the buddha's dharma at least in books if not from this old monk perhaps let's keep going we'll do this together it's a mutual thing i don't give out orders very often but we'll do it together we'll just keep meeting like this until this runs out of steam and someone else will come here and teach in the same way or maybe in a in a more succinct succinct and accurate precise and fun and not difficult way <laughs> shall we stop <laughs> that's a good spot everybody's looking at the clock we have a clock in the wall in here but it's in a place where i can't see it but then people feel sorry for me Bring this clock, but I also have a wristwatch. It's upside down. I'll take a final question if somebody is yearning for something. Okay, train your mind. Don't forget what I'm saying. Don't believe what I'm saying, but train your mind. Go, go somewhere, hold still, watch the movement of the mind so you can eventually see the space, the silence the silence and the spaciousness between apparent things, thoughts, feelings, emotions, incredible spaciousness in which everything arises. Hi, my name is Shoka. I am a monk at Sokokoji, where I'm committed to training my mind under the guidance of my teacher, Sokozan. We rely on your support for our programming, including a scholarship fund to cover living and tuition costs for those who are practicing full-time at the monastery. Thank you for your generosity.